Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 4.1, Multiplication Patterns with Decimals. Please pause to write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to find patterns in products when multiplying by powers of 10. Please pause again to write the lesson objective in your notebook. Let's begin by reading the Unlock the Problem. It says, Cindy is combining equal size rectangles from different fabric patterns to make a posted stamp quilt. Each rectangle has an area of 75 hundredths of a square inch. If she uses a thousand rectangles to make the quilt, what will be the area of the quilt? Before we move on, let's go ahead and underline our question and our numbers. So our question is, what will be the area of the quilt? And we also have the numbers that each rectangle is 0 0.75 or 75 hundredths of an inch, and she is going to use a thousand rectangles. And if we are going to take these two numbers and we have a thousand of 0 0.75, then we are going to multiply. So let's continue below to see the pattern in multiplying. The first thing that we see is one times 0 0.75. We know from the identity property that one times 0 0.75 is going to give us right back out 0 0.75. But now look, if we multiply 0 0.75 by 10, our rule of adding a zero on the end doesn't work because we have that decimal. So instead of adding a zero onto the end, we're going to move this decimal from where it was, 0 0.75, to 7.5. So you can see that decimal moved over one place. So it's like we added a place value of 10, but we didn't actually add a zero. We just moved over one place. We're going to follow that same pattern when we multiply by 100. 100 has two zeros, so now instead of adding two zeros, I'm going to move two places. So you can see that with the little swoopy arrows underneath. Now I have 75. Now I'm going to continue on and multiply by 1,000. 1,000 has three zeros, so I'm going to move over three swoopies, three place values, one, two, three. And then the last one is actually empty, so that's why I fill in the zero. So now I've gone from 0 0.75, and after multiplying by 1,000, so times 1,000, I get 700. And 50 because my decimal point moved over three places. So in the end, the quilt will have an area of 750 square inches. There's a question below we need to answer. It says, as you multiply by increasing powers of 10, how does the position of the decimal point change in the pro product? Well, if we look at where those swoopies helped us move, then it was moving to the right every single time, and it was moving one place value every time I added a power of 10. So let's write the decimal point moved one place to the right with each power of 10. Great job so far. Make sure all of this is written on your page and let's continue on to example one. Example one says, George is making a scale model of the Willis Tower in Chicago for a theater set. The height of the tower is 1,353 feet. If the model is one one hundredth of the actual size of the building, how tall is the model? 
Let's read the blue box and help answer some questions first. What fraction of the actual size of the building is the model? So it says the model is going to be 1 one hundredth of the actual size. So 1 over 100. And the next one says write the fraction as a decimal. So if that is one one hundredth, then that would be a one in the hundredths place. So that would be zero point zero one, because it's a one in the hundredths place. And we know that we're going to be multiplying these because of this word of. We want to know of the size of the building. So we have a total and we want to know what is one hundredth of that. So that's what tells us to multiply. So we are going to be multiplying one one hundredth or zero point zero one times one thousand three hundred and fifty three. And just like we did before, we're going to use a pattern to figure out what our answer is. So first I multiplied by one. If I multiply by one, then nothing changes. I start with 1,353, I end with 1,353. And now I'm going to multiply not by 1, but by 1 tenth. So I got smaller. So if I get smaller, then my number has to get smaller as well. So notice that this time the little line to show where we moved is going to the left because we're getting smaller. So we got one place value smaller. We still have all the same digits, one, three, five, three, one, three, five, three, but now instead of 1,353, I have 1,300, or sorry, 135.3. Now continue that same pattern. Now I'm gonna multiply by 0 0.01. So if I move over one place value with one zero here, then I need to move over two place values for these two zeros here. So if I start with my decimal at the back and I move one, two place values, then that would give me 13.53. All my digits stayed the same. The only thing that moved was my decimal because it's like I'm taking away powers of 10. And I know that I'm doing that because I'm looking at how many zeros it has. So instead of being 1,353 feet tall, one one hundredth size of it would be 13.53 feet tall. That's much better for a theater set. Let's answer question number two before we continue on. It says, as you multiply by decreasing powers of 10, how does the position of the decimal point change? Well, we notice that when we decreased powers of 10, that decreasing means our number got smaller and our decimal moved to the left. So let's write the decimal point moved to the left as we multiplied by a smaller number. All right, fifth graders, our lesson activity today is actually right on your lesson pages. It's the try this section right underneath example two. You can go ahead and do it on the page in your notebook and we'll talk when we ha come to the teacher table about our answers. So I'll go ahead and get you started with the first couple and then we need to continue on on our own. So if we have 10 to the power of zero, remember that 10 to the power of zero equals one. So 10 so 10 to the power of zero has zero zeros, so we have one times 4.78. That would be the same thing, 4.78, didn't change. 10 to the power of one would be 10. So now we've added one zero, and our numbers are getting bigger, so our decimals are gonna move to the right. So now I have four, seven, 
eight, and my decimal moved over one place. So it was here, now it's here. All right, if I have 10 to the power of two, that's gonna be 100, and I'm gonna move over two place values. And then our last one here is 10 to the power of three, which is 1,000, and I'm gonna move over three place values. I've gotten you started. Continue these two problems on your own, and we will share at the teacher table. In example B, we're multiplying by descending powers. So when we descend, our decimal moves to the left because it's getting smaller. So 38 times 1, that's an easy one, that's 38. 38 times 0.1, which means we're going to move over one place to the left. So if I had 38 and my decimal was here, then I move 1 to the left, so my next number should be 3.8. And then, in order to do the next one, notice I have two zeros, so I'm going to move two place values to the right. So my answer should have move over two place values. Go ahead and fill in those last three blanks on your own, and we will talk when I see you tomorrow. Great job so far, fifth graders.